um, as you know, the leaders we have today are basically influenced by the post-independent African leaders. Um, most of those uh, leaders, um, especially after independence, they had a hand in influencing their succession. You know, for example, in Kenya, Jomo Kenyatta basically influenced who would be taking over from him. And as you know, uh, President Moi, you know, you know, loyally served uh, President Kenyatta, you know, for the many years that he was president. And, um, you know, they're, they're basically, as a result of that, in, you know, credited with influencing who becomes leaders in, uh, you know, in, uh, after they're gone. And um, so I think um, most of them, you know, especially Moi, when he took over from Kenyatta, and it's good we are talking about Moi Day today, we are celebrating Moi Day, Moi believed in uh, Nyayo, the Nyayo philosophy, in which he says, maybe Nataka Kufata Nyayo za Mze Kenyatta. So I think he tried, uh, President Moi tried as much as possible to follow into the footsteps of, uh, of, of President Kenyatta. Um, and uh, of course, during, after some time, and especially during the, the, the 1982 coup attempt, you know, then he started now to carve his own personality and, um, you know, having his own grip on power. And, um, uh, but of course, still maintaining, yeah. you know, the, the, the same philosophies, you know, the Kanu ideologies. And, um, and, uh, and uh, I, I think Moi tried as, as, as much as possible to do that. But of course, some African leaders, um, especially today, you know, um, as you know, uh, when the Europeans left after colonization, we were left with, uh, you know, most countries were either following uh, uh, the capitalist ideology or the communist ideology. So many African leaders uh, either had to choose. For example, if you look at Tanzania, you know, you know, President Nyerere with Ujama yes. was trying to copy some kind of communist ideology. Yes. And of course, the African countries that are, were colonized by the British huh, were, you know, following the capitalist market system. And uh, we had some that were carving out their own semblance of uh, what they call African socialism, which was neither, you know, really communist or it's a mixture of, yes, of, yes. of that. And um, uh, if you can see today, immediately after independence, uh, you know, th th they followed the footsteps of the, the European powers. Uh, but if you look at today, everything is changing. And uh, if, uh, especially the invasion of China into Africa. So the African leaders, those who, fo who fought for our independence, never imagined that uh, China would be influencing uh, you know, Africa today as it is today. So I, I think that is one of the surprising uh, uh, you know, you know, factors uh, you know, that, that is coming to play no. today. Okay. Well, you have adequately highlighted the state of um, African leadership or leadership, yes. especially in Kenya. Let's take a broader look. Let's yeah. incorporate the Ujamaa philosophy in Tanzania or Republic yes. of Tanganyika, as it was um, yes. called earlier on, Ubuntu philosophy yes. in South Africa, mm. um, led by Nelson Mandela. That was made popular by Nelson Mandela. We can't yeah. forget about Kwame Nkrumah of, of Ghana, yeah. who actually pushed for Pan-Africanism. Yes. Now, this are some of the fundamental philosophies that were pushed by the leaders who led Africa after it gained, after various countries gained their independence. Yeah. Is this still what we can talk about in a, in, a, in a perspective of if these leaders actually came back, would they be proud of the Africa we are in right now? That is the elephant in the room. Uh -huh. um, and it, it's an argumentative um, question. Uh, of course, some would, um, uh, you know, would be happy, but um, most of the leaders, I'm sure, in terms of uh, the ideals that they fought for, you know, um, especially after independence, trying to actually unite their countries. As you know, the colonialists actually played a big role into segregating Africa. You know, the boundaries that, um, th that we have today in Africa are basically a colonial legacy. You know, the colonialists left us their languages and every, even systems of governance okay. that we have today. You know, the provincial administration in Kenya, for example. You know, all these were created by the, by the, by the colonialists. Um, but, you know, one of the th things that we failed as a, 
uh, as, as African countries was to actually, uh, you, know, you know, restore the Africanism, the Ubuntuism. You know, um, as you know, um, uh, just like rightfully you, say, you said, you know, Africa had a lifestyle. You know, you know, and their lifestyle, of course, symbolized almost, you know, almost socialism, almost yeah. uh, like Ujama, Yes. where families were staying together. We believed in uh, extended familyism, extended okay. family system. And uh, that today is, is not happening. If you come to most of the African, uh, especially in the urban areas, especially in Kenya, you see we have, uh, you know, street children. You know, this is something that uh, if we, for example, adopted the African familyism, the extended familyism, you know, we would not have uh, student, uh, sorry, uh, street kids, you know, walking idly in, uh, in, in Nairobi. If you go to the village today, like where I come from in Siaya, you will not find a street child. Why? Because uh, we are st still trying, you know, to have what we're calling an extended family system, whereby even if my father dies or my mother dies, you know, I have my uncles who can take care of me. Yes. But Rogers, I went to uh, Zanzibar. I was surprised that Zanzibar today, if you walk into Zanzibar city, you will not find a street child. You won't find street child's begging. And when I asked the former president of Zanzibar, you know, you, you know who is my friend, huh? uh, President Karume, he told me that Zanzibar is still keeping, you know, that extended family model, mm -hmm. you know, that is ensuring that um, you are your brother's keeper, that uh, you have to make sure that a child has eaten. If the child's father died, the society takes care of it. So I think Zanzibar is a good example of, uh, of what we can as a, as a society, as Africa, if we are able to keep that Ubuntuism, the, the oneness of Africa, and the, the aspirations, that, the ideals that uh, Nelson Mandela you know, tried to leave us with. Well, yes. st still talking about the oneness of Africa, yes. um, Libyan former leader um, Gaddafi had actually pushed for the African Union, you know, the mm. consolidating of all the resources in Africa and actually forming a tough economic um, uh, challenger to the West, if yes. we can put it that way. Mm. And we saw that being fired down. Was this perhaps in good faith, even as we start highlighting on leaders in Africa? I think, uh, Rogers, whatever happened in Libya, you know, and I have been, um, I've spoken to so many African leaders, especially the, the indigenous, uh, the, the local uh, uh, African, uh, you know, Gaddafi in his lifetime tried to promote, you know, the, 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 like the, the Council of Leaders. Like, for example, the Lua Council of Elders, the Kuyu Council of Elders, the Mijikenda, you know, he tried to actually promote them. And I remember he used to sponsor them, go to uh, Tripoli to have meetings. And, um, you know, uh, Gaddafi had this dream of United States of, of, of Africa, you know, because he had foreseen, foreseen rightfully that uh, if Africa comes together, we are a big population. We look at the resources we have in Africa. You know, immense. You yeah. know, look at South Sudan. Okay. You know, the gold that we have in South Sudan today, the diamond, you know, the resources, the oil, has the capability of feeding the whole of the East African region. You know, so, you know, the problem now we've had is that um, Africa, and also if you go to the Democratic Republic of Congo, you, you know, the war that we have there, the instability that we have there, and yet Congo has resources natural resources that is able to feed not only Congo, you know, but, you know, even the rest of Africa. But if you lo look at, um, you know, the kind of scramble that goes on there, the, 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 the minerals that come out of Congo, you know, they are found in European countries, eh? okay. building roads, building, uh, you know, um, you know um, and, and new whatever, you know, and, 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 and yet the Congo is still like a, like a village. So I, I think... Um, uh, it's a very sad state um, at, at the moment, and um, the dream that uh, Gaddafi had for us, if we were able to actually fulfill it, mm -hmm. I think we would be, Africa would be at a better place today. So I, I think it is a big, big, um, Africa has to regret, uh, you know, whatever happened to Gaddafi. You know, he had gone, but look at Libya after Gaddafi has left. Uh, you know, it is a shell. Okay. You know, there's no peace, there's okay. no stability in yeah. Libya. Yeah. Well, well, let's get back to Kenya right now. Yeah. Um, yes. Critics might argue that Machiavellism yes. is what is 
fueling leadership, yes. not just in Kenya, but in various countries in Africa. Yes. The concept of actually thinking solely about yourself, mm -hmm. not how you will help people. I yes. remember Daniel Arab Moy was so fond of saying that leadership, you know, all the power and privileges that mm -hmm. come is all because of the people yes. who voted for this particular leaders. Are yes. we seeing um, leaders actually deviate from that, um, not following the, uh, the Nyayo philosophy, not following the Ubuntu philosophy, but actually um, concentrating on oneself and how they can actually use that position mm. to channel resources to their accounts, to channel resources to their family members. Is this something we are seeing? Yes, absolutely. We are seeing that. And uh, if you look at Africa today and uh, look at the way we have, had, you know, we have handled the issues of elections in Africa, you can say that, um, you know, especially most African leaders, they're not adhering to their philosophy that... Um, you know, basically, according to them, you know, um, it, it, everything is about election. The African leader is always thinking about the next election, but not thinking about the next generation. So this is a big pro problem with, with Africa. And um, just like in the realist philosophy, of course, uh, it's about interest. You know, most realists, uh, you know, they're, they're thinking about their interests. How can they be able to, to maintain their interests? And that's why you, you can see, you know, most African leaders have been held, ca they're, they're held captive by their, you know, their close aides okay. who want to take advantage of their proximity to power to grab as much, you know, wealth as, 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 as they can to, mm -hmm. and hide that, you know, outside the, the, the country. I was looking at um, uh, stories, for example, what's going on in South Sudan. You know, it's, it's, it's an issue of, uh, and, uh, you know, Rogers, look at these guys in South Sudan. They have safe haven here in our country, yet there is war. In South Sudan, there's no peace in that country. Which but is quite unfortunate. It's, it's very unfortunate. Yeah. And, and uh -huh. they're, stinking, they're stinking rich. Their kids, you know, are rich. They're enjoying our peace uh -huh. and destroying their country. So yeah. it's, it's really, really bad. Yeah, living lavish lifestyles yes. in Nairobi and neighboring yes. countries. Um, as we conclude, due yes. to constraints of time, yes. unfortunately, yes. Yes. let's talk about the Moy legacy. Yes. I'm pretty sure you were well in existence yes. during the 24 years of rule um, under the the Moi legacy. Now, let's talk about what you remember yes. Moi best for as we celebrate Moi Day. Yes, Th thank Briefly, you. Briefly, thank kindly. you. Yes, yeah. um, Moi is, um, as you know, was president for 24 years. And uh, most of us who grew up during the Moi era, you know, he was uh, like the only president we knew. And uh, during that time, you know, we remember Fimbo Yanyayo. You know, Moi was the president that tried as much as possible to craft an ideology. As you know, African politics is bereft of ideologies. But Moi, after he came to power, he came up with the Nyaya philosophy of peace, love, and unity. And in our psyche, when we go to school, we were talking about Nyayo, we were talking about everything we were reciting about Nyayo. So Moi will be remembered as the president that did his best to keep this nation together. Even though he ruled for a long time, but he kept the nation together, he let people understand, you know, the importance of unity, peace, love, and unity. And like they used to say, some of Moise Minister used to say, that uh, Kenya is an island of peace in turbulent waters. So Moi is credited with actually making sure that Kenya remained a peaceful okay. nation. Okay. Yes. And after Moi left, you know, I mean, you can see the problem we have had in Kenya, especially post-election violence. Okay. Huh? Okay. I think some of that would not have happened during Moi's time. Well, those are the regards of Daniel Juma Omondi, who is the executive director of the Global Peace Foundation Kenya. Thank you so much for making time and giving us your input on yes. African leadership, which is well-valued yes. and we'll definitely look forward to more conversations.